Hey everyone, I'm Fred Ranger and I hope you're doing good. It's been a while since I've recorded a video, but I've been traveling abroad. I've been to Maine, USA. I've also been to Portugal. You can actually see the recap and cinematic video I filmed right here and uh, tell me what you think. But today I'm happy to be back with a more technical video, something that could actually help you if you just bought the awesome Fujifilm X-T3 or for a matter of fact, any Fujifilm cameras because you know what? They all kind of have the same menus and I really like the menus way more than my Sony's because they're more intuitive, I think, and this is valid for the Fujifilm X100, the X-T3, the X-T2, the X-H1. I actually did a video on my favorite settings for the X-H1 that you can actually see also right here. And now I wanna share with you all of my settings that I usually use for the stills aspect of Fujifilm X-T3 and also for the video aspect because this is a hell of a video camera and I actually filmed a client shoot with this camera and you can actually see it right here. Wow, that's three cards in like 15 seconds or something like that. So I'm not trying to push all the other videos. I'm just trying to create an environment where you can actually see what I'm talking about and not just me, you know, blah, blah, blahing about settings and, you know, stuff that you might not be uh, able to see and picture yourself. So without further ado, let's deep dive into the menus of the Fujifilm X-T3 and everything I set up anytime I get a new camera that has this little Fujifilm logo on it. So let's go right into the camera. Okay, so we are now starting with the Fujifilm X-T3 menu. So first off, I am in single shot uh, focus mode here for the stills photography. And then we're going to talk about some of the video settings that I'm using. But this is a little bit later in the video. If you actually want just to see my video settings, you can click on the little timestamp that you see in the description box below. So. IQ menu, this is the first menu you'll see when you open the Fujifilm X-T3 menu and as a matter of fact, any Fujifilm camera that I know of and the image size I leave on three by two unless I know I wanna do a video on YouTube and where I'm gonna be featuring some of the photos that I take, I might go straight up to 16 by nine just to see how it's gonna look. Uh, with the aspect ratio already cropped for YouTube, but most of the time when I'm, you know, doing regular photography, I'm leaving it at 3.2. Uh, image quality, I mean, might as well just shoot raw because uh, it, the option is there, but also fine. So this is the JPEG and then this is the uh, actual raw file and it's going to record both. I have two cards in the camera, so one uh, card will get the raws and the other one will get the JPEG. The JPEGs are, are really cool when you want to do you know, transfer it to your phone, or even some of the shots are so good uh, when they're processed with the color profiles that you find in the camera or the film simulation, should I say, uh, that I use them straight out of the camera. So I like having the JPEG in the RAW file right here. The RAW recording, I mean, again, might as well just lose the, uh, just use the lossless compressed since it's taking less space on the hard drive, but it's not affecting the quality of the file. So it's a compressed uh, version of a RAW, but uh, again, I don't see any issue with using that mode and it gives me smaller files. Film simulation, I leave it on standard because you're going to see where I change my film simulation a little bit later on. Grain effect, I don't want to use grain effect because I like to do post processing. So I like to do it in post and not in the camera for these type of effects. Same goes for color chrome. White balance, I leave on auto. I think uh, the camera does a really good job at uh, you know gauging the white balance, but I can always change it afterwards in the Lightroom or Capture One or Luminar um, software if I want to make it a little bit warmer or a little bit more cold, the option is there afterwards. Dynamic range, I leave at 100. Dynamic range priority, I leave it off. And this is where I created my little secret sauce for Fujifilm cameras and it goes as follow. I like to protect the highlight, so I like having my highlight tones to minus one. I like my shadows to be 
boost it up a little bit just to you know sometimes see some of the details in the shadow so i like a little plus one here the color i'll leave it zero i think uh, as is is really good sharpness i like very sharp photos so i give it a little plus two and noise reduction i am at minus two and by the way these are only going to be applied to your jpegs the raw files won't contain any uh, information regarding minus and pluses you'll be able to do it in post uh, long exposure noise reduction i leave it off i don't like any noise reduction in camera i like to apply it in post also lens modulation optimizer i have it now on color space srgb I'm a, i've always shot in srgb without any issues pixel mapping uh, i don't use that and then uh, select custom settings this is interesting because you can create your special sauce like i like to call it and choose your uh, actual color profile and a bunch of other stuff like the plus and minus that i just showed you and you can store it in the camera for quick access so this is a very neat feature then if we go to autofocus and manual focus, I mean the focus area, I leave it at the center. But as you can see, I have a fairly small little focus area. And you can change that with the front dial. If you feel that you want a bigger uh, autofocus area, you can just uh, swipe or actually turn the dial to the right. And same goes when you turn it to the left. It's going to reduce the size of it. I like a very precise um, autofocus, so I leave it at the smallest. So this is great. Let's go back in the menu. Right here. So the autofocus mode, I uh, am a single point shooter, but sometimes I'll use the zone if I do some street photography or if I do some videos. And wide tracking, not a fan, and all definitely not a fan. This is kind of an auto mode, and I, uh, I like to choose my focus for my style of photography. So mostly it's on single point and zone. The autofocus uh, Continuous custom settings. I uh, leave it at multi-purpose. Usually it does the job. If I know there's going to be some obstacle in front of what I'm shooting and I want to keep the tracking on the subject, I might go to two. The other modes, I'm not really using it. Um, I did actually create a profile that's custom for me, and this is the sixth one that you see here. But again, most of the time I'm in multi-purpose. Store the autofocus mode by orientation. This is uh, very handy because when you use the camera and you are setting some autofocus points uh, with the joystick, it's going to remember the autofocus point and where it is based on if the camera is in landscape mode or in portrait mode. So this comes very handy and you don't have to dial it back in uh, to the uh, things you were shooting. So that's that's pretty pretty neat feature that they have there. The autofocus uh, display, I have on. I want to know where the autofocus points are actually. The number of autofocus point, I mean, you, you have the choice between 117 and 425, which covers pretty much all the sensors. So you might want to use the highest uh, here because that's, you know, part of the reason why we bought the Fujifilm X-T3 is that it has so many autofocus points. Also, the pre autofocus light, I don't, uh, or sorry, pre autofocus, I don't use that in photography. I want it to focus only when I press or half press the shutter or when I'm back button focusing. Autofocus illuminator, I don't want to blind people, so I leave it at off. Uh, I detect usually it's going to be on uh, outside of the fact that sometimes I want to do some landscape and I'm going to turn it off but uh, I like having it on and I like of course having it on eye autofocus because that's the most precise autofocus you'll get if you are shooting people then the uh, autofocus plus manual focus function I leave it on I like to have the ability to go from manual or from from autofocus to manual focus just, just by turning the focus ring so it's going to switch from one mode to the other that's pretty cool the manual focus assist I choose peaking and then I use the red settings I think this is the at least for me the most obvious way to track uh, where I'm actually focusing if I'm in manual focusing mode then the focus check I have it at at on, I want to know if it's really in focus. Interlock spot autofocus exposure and focus area, I have it at on. The instant autofocus settings, I have it uh, to prioritize the um, securing the focus or acquiring focus before um, actually doing anything else. Depth of field scale, I have it on pixel. Uh, release focus priority. When I'm on the autofocus single point, I like to prioritize the focus because I'm focusing on one thing and I want to make sure this 
uh, thing that I'm photographing is really in focus. But when I'm in continuous autofocus, I want to prioritize the release of uh, the photos. So, you know, some of them might not be sharp, but if you're tracking something really fast, you might not care as much uh, having 100% of your shots in focus. You just want, you know, a couple shots in focus. So uh, the touchscreen, I have it on autofocus. Then if you go to the shooting setting, page one, the drive setting, I mean, this is something that I use quite often when I want to do some bracketing, uh, bracketing photos, and you can select all your bracketing function right here, but that, that it may be for another video. And the speed burst, I have it on max without the actual um, electronic shutter. This is the mechanical shutter, and it can give you 11 frames per second. And for the low setting burst, I have it on 5.7 frames per second. Okay, so sports finder mode, I have it at off. Pre-shoot electronic um, shutter, I don't use electronic shutter. Self timer, uh, I use it sometimes, it's at off most of the time when I'm using the camera and I'm behind the camera. Interval timer shooting, this is where you can set up your time lapse. Maybe I'll do a video about that. This is a pretty neat feature built into the to the camera. The shutter type, like I said, I shoot with mechanical shutter. I don't like the electronic shutter. It does you know, some weird stuff to my uh, photos, so I prefer to leave it at mechanical. The flicker reduction, um, I will leave it at off here. Uh, image stabilized mode, depending on the lens you're, you have. If you have an image stabilized or an lens stabilization uh, built into the lens, you will be able to turn that on or off right here. The ISO settings, I have three. Uh, the first one is from 160, which is the lowest ISO that this camera can go, to 3200. So this is, and I leave the shutter speed on auto. The second one I have is for when it's a little bit darker, but I still want that sharpness. Let's say a dark uh, portrait. This is where I'm gonna go, you know, from 160 to 6400 but with a minimum shutter speed of 125th of a second to make sure the pictures are still sharp. And auto three, this is in last resort when you know there's really, really, really low light and I wanna push the sensor to the limit. I use the 160 to 12,800 ISO here and I let the camera decide on the minimum shutter speed. Pretty neat feature. Usually it's on two. Uh, pushing this camera to 6,400 is uh, pretty much where I want to push it for the maximum. Uh, wireless communication, you can set all your wireless communication there. Flash, I don't really mess with flash. I used to when I was on Nikon uh, cameras a bit on Fuji, but I, uh, I prefer natural light. Okay, so this is the portion where we talk about the video settings, and this is a very cool video camera that you have if you have the X-T3. Very powerful, so here is, or here are my settings that I use on a daily basis. So first off, I usually shoot in 4K, 24P, and this is where you can set it up. So I choose the 16 by nine ratio. Sometimes I'll go with the cinema uh, 17 by nine, but I prefer to do that in post also. And I set my 24p right here. I mean, 23.98 uh, or 24 is pretty much the same thing. One is for like cinema, and the other one is uh, for computer. So it's uh, it's pretty much the, the same uh, aspect or proportion. And uh, some of you guys might wondering if I use 400 megabytes. I'm still using 200 megabytes, which is plenty of data to render the images that I'm shooting. <clears throat> and um, I don't feel the need to go to 400 and fill up my hard drives uh, even more. I think 200 is just a sweet spot for 4K 16x9 and the type of videography that I'm uh, that I'm doing. So uh, I use H.264. Uh, I want to start messing with 10-bit and H.265, but again, I don't want to cram my computer and uh, the CPU, so I prefer staying with a format that really works well with my Final Cut editing. The movie compression, I use long GOP, so this is uh, the format I'm using versus all intra. Again, uh, easier on the hard drive. Full HD, so this is the um, slow shutter speed, or the, sorry, not slow shutter speed, this is the slow motion setting. And this is where you can choose if you want to use 60p, which I usually use for half the speed or the 120p at 24p uh, and this is a really buttery and smooth slow motion right 
in the camera, built into the camera, so you don't have to do anything in post. It's going to output a video file that's already slow motion. Film simulation, I uh, use a lot of these uh, when I shoot JPEG and uh, when I shoot video, it's mainly on Eterna. So I will sometimes use the Velvia for some scenes, but I prefer to stay on Eterna because it's not a log profile, but it's very flat. So I can either use it straight out of the camera or I can do a little bit of uh, post editing in Final Cut. So I, I kind of like this profile. I know it's a very popular profile, uh, but there's a reason why it's because it's so uh, cinematic and it's also very um, easy to grade. So going back to the video menu, um, the white balance, I usually set my white balance on my own. So this is why you're seeing here the K for color temperature. And uh, I dial it in and I look at the, how it looks on the, the back of the screen. Usually I can dial it in. The auto actually does a pretty decent job if I'm like vlogging and I don't have time to set up my shot. So uh, it's either between you know setting it myself and using the auto functionality. So if we go back to the video menu, you can actually see that, uh, let me put that back here at off. Okay, white balance and dynamic range is at 100. Uh, highlight tones, uh, for video, I, I usually leave that alone. I, I leave that at zero. Same for the shadow tone. What I do change is the colors because like I said, uh, Eterna is really, really flat. So sometimes I like to just straight out of the camera, go uh, straight from the camera to Final Cut to YouTube. So I give it a little boost, so a little plus two here for the colors. And sharpness, like I said, uh, not a fan of post-processing for video. I, I don't mind editing a photo for hours, but for video, the sooner I can get it to YouTube, the better I feel. So that's why I put a little bit of sharpness there, so I don't have to do it in post. Noise, noise reduction at zero. Uh, 4K interframe noise reduction also off. This is a thing I want to try with the F-Log and the HLG, so hybrid log uh, gamma uh, recording. I haven't tried it and I've heard so many good things and so many other reviewers um, using that functionality. So I might actually try some videos. I'm going to France in uh, next month and uh, so I'm going to be able to, uh, to try that. The peripheral light correction, I have it to off. Focus area, um, what is this? It's the same thing, but you can't change the size in video, so good to know. Let's go back to the video function. Oh, right here. That's the thing though, the, the menu doesn't go back to where you left off, so Fuji, I know there was a way to do it on the X-H1, or maybe it was because I didn't have anything in my menu, but right now it defaults always to the my menu when I go back to the menu, so that's something I would like Fuji to fix, or at least give us the ability to do it uh, and to go back to the where we left off. Um, so where were we? We were here, focus area, movie autofocus mode, I like to put it on multi actually, so it covers pretty much all the sensor depending on where you are or what you're filming. Autofocus custom settings. Uh, I like to give it a plus two on the track sensitivity, but in terms of the speed, I like it to be a natural movement, just like if someone was actually focusing the lens. So, uh, so these are my settings for tracking and focusing. Face to tech, again, depending on what I'm filming, but usually it'll be on if I have a subject uh, in front of me and I'm doing it with the eye auto focusing system. Pretty accurate. Manual focus assist, I use the peaking settings and also on the red high, just like the photo settings. The focus check, I have it at on. The 4K movie output, I have it 4K on the SD card and full HD on the monitor HDMI output. Full HD movie output, uh, same thing. I actually have full HD on both. HDMI output and full display, this will depend, but usually when I'm filming myself, I want to see my settings at the same time. So I leave it at on. 4K HDMI standby quality is on 4K, HDMI record control on, zebra settings, I have them at uh, off right now, but uh, again, depending on what I'm filming, I might put the zebra and uh, the zebra settings is at 100. So I wanna know if it's peaking. That's a really neat way to find that out. Audio settings, um, I have the microphone, again, depending on if it's in the external mic or the internal mic, usually I'll use an, in, uh, an external mic and I will set it myself to manual and depending if it's a 
like right now Rode Video Mic Pro uh, and I'm using the preamp from the camera plus uh, the dBs uh, that I can get from the microphone it'll be set fairly low but if it's some Rode Video Micro then I might have to boost it a little bit and rely more on the camera's um, actual preamps so time code settings don't uh, really use that uh, tally light that's a very neat feature from fujifilm so you can actually know if the camera is recording and i have i have it uh, blinking in the front and blinking in the back so that way i know if the camera is recording okay movie silent control that might be one of the most uh, important settings on this camera because if you want to do a bit like the Sony cameras and have a recall button for your settings, that's the closest thing you'll get with the Fuji X-T3 or, XT, or X-H1 or X-T2. You can actually engage the movie silent control. If when you put it at on, what it'll do is that when you'll go to the movie mode right here, the settings are going to be recalled, the last uh, settings you use, but you can also set everything right from here. So your shutter speed, your aperture, ISO, the mic level, and so on and so forth. So it's very intuitive, way more than the Sony's actually, uh, to have that handy right here. Uh, the thing though is that the other settings won't necessarily work, so you'll have to set your video settings right from here. Also, you can choose your uh, white balance and the film simulation. It's a pretty neat feature. I use it a lot, so I have the video settings, and when I go back to stills, all my still setting, the ISO, the aperture, and everything will be set back to where I left off. So that's for the video settings. Let's go to the setup. So you have here my user settings. Uh, this is pretty self-explanatory, so I won't go too much into details. I have the sound settings, um, the beep I have to off, self timer, I mean you can pretty much either pause this or just uh, skip it because it's uh, it's to your preference. Uh, same goes for the screen settings, I don't think I have to go through that. And what about here, one settings that I really like here is the um, framing guideline. I like to use the rule of third a lot, so I like to put the grid, the nine grid, so you'll be able to see uh, little you know squares and uh, frame your shot accordingly so that's pretty cool the auto rotate uh, playback i leave it at off i don't like when it's you know turning when you turn the camera so i prefer it to stay prefer the playback to stay in the center of the screen and uh, that's just how i like it uh what else i think this is pretty much what i have here the buttons and dials this is something i uh, spent a lot of time thinking about so let's go through it the focus lever settings I have it on so when you engage the focus lever setting it's going to activate the uh, functionality and uh, right here I have it at on then you have the edit save quick menu so this is where you can actually put all the things that you want in your Q menu that's a pretty uh, neat feature too the function settings so this is the button layout so my top here the function button that you have on top of the camera i've set the wi-fi connection so i can engage and transfer to my phone very rapidly then the function 2 button which is right in front of the camera i have set it to face recognition and eye uh, focusing because that's something that i change a lot so i like having it at the top of my uh, finger right there and I can engage or de-engage that uh, feature. Function 3 it's my focus mode, the function 4 is my film simulation, F function 5 is my white balance, function 6 is the autofocus uh, placement and then you've got the different swipe option. I like having my histogram on and sometimes off so I like, uh, I like it when I swipe up to have the um, uh, histogram. And then uh, here, when I swipe, it's the uh, sports finder mode. Actually, that's not what I usually use. I like having the self timer because that's also something I use quite a lot. So when I swipe left, um, I, I'm actually able to engage the uh, self timer. Then the uh, selector f uh, button settings right here, I have it at function. Then uh, the command dial settings, I have it at my F. Um, stop that I can change in the front 
then when I engage the front dial and I press on it, I can change the exposure compensation. In order to do that, just a quick tip, you have to have your dial here on top to see and not engage to like another like three or two. It has to be on C if you want to be able to use this function where you press on the front dial, you turn it. I'm going to give you an example. So if I press here, see here, it's changing my exposure compensation. And then it's down, let's put it back in the middle. And also the good news is that you have five stop of exposure composition when you use that technique versus only three when you use the dial on top. So neat little trick right here for you, my friends. Okay, so that's pretty much what I have in here. The ISO dial settings, you can see them here. Uh, shutter autofocus, I like having everything to on. Uh, shutter auto exposure, everything to on also. Uh, shoot without lens, I like having it to on because I can adapt some different lenses, some old lenses, and it won't uh, shoot if uh, it, this is too off. Uh, shoot without a card, I don't want to do that. I want it to tell me if I don't have a card in there that I need to put one, so I leave that to off. Then the focus ring is on the clockwise focus ring operation uh, nonlinear, and that's pretty much touch settings. You can see my settings right there. Power management, I have it on two minutes. Performance, always boost. I mean, this is the uh, speed of the autofocus and so on. I mean, the battery lasts a little bit less longer, but the X-T3 does a pretty good job at uh, managing the battery life. So that's uh, pretty cool. Save data. Uh, this is where you can set up your RAW and JPEG organization. I like to do the uh, RAW and JPEG at the same time, like I said. So slot one is going to be the RAW and slot two is going to be the JPEG. And also the videos will go on slot two, actually, because the RAWs are a little bit uh, larger files. So I like leaving as much files as I can or as much space as I can for the videos. And Bluetooth settings, we don't have to go through that. Yeah, that's pretty much all the user settings I use. And button settings, we went through that. The My Menu, this, these are the functions that I use the most. So the first one is all about the video settings. So you can see here the face, the white uh, balance, the film simulation, and so on and so forth. And then if we go to the page two, it's going to be my um, autofocus settings face and eye detection, ISO and autofocus mode. And that's it. Those are my settings. You're still here? Like literally you went through the whole thing, the whole video, you set up your camera. Wow, that was a heck of a video. This is a 30 minute plus video. But again, I think this is the type of video I really enjoyed when I first got new cameras, whether it's a Nikon way back when, a Fujifilm camera or a Sony camera, especially the Sony ones because the menus, let's not go there. So if uh, you found this video helpful, please consider giving a thumbs up because it helps other people like you find, about, find out about this video and being able to share it is very interesting also. Consider subscribing. Most of, the, of you are seeing this video without being subscribed to the channel. I do camera reviews. I also help people tell better stories with gear uh, made for this day and age. And there's so many good cameras, so many good choices out there that it's helpful when someone is testing it for you before you buy it. But the best way is not listen to YouTubers or to influencers and so on and so forth. Just rent the camera and see it for yourself. I've been Fred Ranger. Please enjoy life, be happy, and enjoy your gear. Cheers.